Each year, more of us are choosing cheap flights to travel on our holiday trips than ever before. But is aviation fuel responsible for creating the very weather we are trying to escape from? During this program, we will explore how the aviation industry has gone from pioneer to polluter in their quest to reach for the sky. The Lysander uh, was the plane that used to um, tow the drogue for target practice. They'd go out over the um, sea and you'd uh, continually hear pop, 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 like this. And on one or two occasions, the drogue was so badly shot up, it would drop in the fields here. <laughs> Ted Solomon has lived here on the Gower Peninsula of South Wales his entire life. His passion for aircraft is equally matched by an intense love for his farm. Strewn across his farm lie the crumbling remains of a World War II airbase. To prepare for the Battle of Britain in 1940, the Air Ministry took control of his fields to train fighter pilots. We had the um, airman's mess, the sergeant's mess, from which I'm speaking now, and the officer's mess, all put on our fields. For many generations, his own and many other families had relied on their common rights to feed their animals on nearby Fairwood Common. But over the course of the war, much of the rich and fertile soil disappeared under concrete runways, access roads and buildings. We were looking forward to that huge central area of Fairwood to be given back. And all the installations demolished, taken away. Despite written assurances that Ted's farm would be returned intact, the Air Ministry instead abandoned the airbase leaving the buildings and runways to slowly decline. Eleven years after the end of the war, the Gower Peninsula was officially recognised as Britain's first area of outstanding natural beauty. In that same year, Parliament extinguished the grazing rights of all Fairwood commoners. As compensation, Ted was offered only 51 pounds, five shillings, and 11 pence. In return, Ted would have to agree to waive away any possibility of future claims. The young farmer refused to sign. So that's how it stands today. They've taken the land and they've refused to pay us the price for it. The commoners being being farmers, busy people, nobody has the time really to put into it to bring it to a head. Meanwhile, back on Fairwood Common, this World War II airfield was put back into use, mainly for private flying lessons. Until 2002, when a high-flying accountant stepped into the picture. Millionaire Roy Thomas purchased the lease of Fairwood Airfield for an undisclosed sum, adding it to his extensive list of properties in the nearby city of Swansea. Yeah, Mr Thomas is also chairman of his own airline company, Air Wales, which began using the airfield for commuting between London and Swansea. Mr. Thomas hopes to expand the small airfield situated in the middle of a prime beauty spot into a fully commercial airport. By lowering journey times, Air Wales is challenging the other existing methods of transport in the race to London. However, as road traffic around the airport increases, 
Local residents are concerned about the impact a larger airport will have on their lives. The people that come to Gawa are mainly couples and families with young children and they come for the beaches, they come from the walks and uh, my guest book is full of remarks about how relaxing Gower is, how glorious the beaches are. People say, well, there won't be big aeroplanes coming in. There doesn't have to be big aeroplanes. The 50-seaters that are coming in now are very, very noisy propeller planes. Aircraft noise is only one concern. In the summer of 2003, Swansea City councillors were summoned to the airfield to inspect the proposed site of a new aircraft hangar. Similar in size to 144 bedroom houses, nature lovers are concerned that the huge construction work could affect the surrounding award-winning countryside. We've been concerned about the airport for many years because it's completely surrounded by a SAC, that's a special area of conservation. It contains the marsh fertility butterfly, which is quite a rare species in Europe generally. Uh, they have considered it as an area of outstanding natural beauty, but that's not an ecological uh, designation. That's a landscape de designation, and they haven't looked at the ecology at all. At the Guild Hall, the councillors find public demonstrations as they arrive to make their decision about the construction of the enormous hangar. Any other development of this size would go through rigorous um, control. There would be environmental studies done. There would be impact on the, on the local economy and the local environment. But this is not happening in this case. And we feel it's a case where the council are actually uh, in favour of some, something because a local businessman supporting it. And three days before the planning committee, when the papers became available, we had a meeting with one of the chief planners. I asked about uh, the ecology of the site. And he said that an ecological report had been prepared uh, by one of the ecological people in his department, uh, Judy Shorrock. So we asked the receptionist to contact uh, Judy Shorrock uh, to find out where the report was. And the message came back that the report had been lost. Swansea Council later admitted that the report had only ever consisted of a hastily written email from their ecologist. The unsigned note was inserted into the file before being presented to the planning committee. Inside the council chambers, only one councillor spoke out against the airport and the plans for the hangar were passed. Controversial plans to erect barbed wire fences surrounding the common were also given the green light. Friends of the Earth continued to request a full report on how the airport expansion would affect the surrounding ecology. Eventually we had a reply, and this must have been three months after the planning meeting, and the report said there, there was no ecological report. So you, do you feel like you've been lied to? Oh, well, uh, we've been deceived, we feel. We've been deceived. David Gill, head of Swansea Planning for Major Projects, declined to be interviewed and supplied this statement instead. It is adopted council planning policy to support the retention and development of the airport subject to there being no unacceptable adverse environmental impact. Is there a fundamental problem with the, the airport being that it's in the wrong place? Clearly if you were establishing a, an airport to service southwest Wales now, you wouldn't build it at Fairwood on Gower, it would be closer to the M4. Having said that, there clearly is that infrastructure there, it would cost an awful lot now to close it down because compensation would have to be paid by presumably the local authority if, if it chose to go down that road and it does not because it strongly supports uh, the um, role of Swansea Airport as a, as a regional airport. Political support for the industry is so strong that in 2003 the government launched their 30-year aviation plan, also known as a white paper. The document supports the expansion of nearly every main British airport.